Today we will talk about adding and subtracting like mixed numbers. Let's review what a like mixed number was with a group of like mix, mixed numbers. <clears throat> In a group of like mixed numbers what you have is you have a whole part and a fraction part. For the mixed numbers to be like you need to have the same denominator. So 2 and 1 third and 3 and 2 thirds are like mixed numbers. But on the other hand, if you have 2 and 1 third and 3 and 1 fourth, those are unlike mixed numbers. Now, we're going to add and subtract like mixed numbers. Let's, let's take 1 and 1 third, which will be shown like this, plus 2 and one third. So you're going to have one, two, and one third. You're going to have what? You're going to have one, two, three pieces. So let's do that. You're going to have one, two, three whole pieces. And then you have two of the third pieces. So I know the answer is 3 and 2 thirds. Well, let's see how I could have gotten that. Let me um, add some space here. Okay. Let's add a little more space. All right. Now I'm going to write one and one third and two and one third vertically. I know the answer is three and two thirds. What I do is I add the fractional parts. One third and one third is two thirds. And that is a proper fraction, so that is good. And then you, I add the whole number parts, two plus one three and two thirds. So the procedure is you add the fraction parts. Make sure the fraction part is proper. If it is proper you're done. If it is improper we'll see we have to do some more work. And then you have to add the whole number part. Two plus one is three. Now let's do an example where I'm going to have one and two thirds and add to that two and one third and let's see what we'll get. One and two thirds is one and then you have two thirds. Then you'll have two and one third. Here's one, here's two and one third. What you're going to have, you're going to have one, two, three whole pieces, one, two, three whole pieces, and now you have one, two, three one-third pieces, one, two, three. But you look at it, you go, oh, look at that. It is four whole pieces. And let me show you how that's done. One and two-thirds, two and one-third, gives you three-thirds, two plus one is three. Three three-thirds means, three-thirds means one. And then you have three plus one, that is four. All right, let's do another example. I have one and two-thirds, and I want to add two and two-thirds to it. Let's see what I get. One and two thirds means I have one whole piece and two thirds of a piece. Two and two thirds means I have one, two, and now you have two thirds of that. So you have these two adding. What am I going to end up having? Here's one whole piece, two whole pieces, three whole pieces. One, two, three. Then I'm going to have one, two, three, another one, 
and then I'll have the fourth one here. So it looks like I will have one, two, three, four, and one third of a piece. Let me show you how that's done. Okay, I will have one and two thirds, two and two thirds. When you add, you're going to get two plus two, four thirds, two plus one, three. Remember what I was saying? The fractional part has to be proper. So you go and you figure out what is four thirds, since this is improper, what four thirds is in terms of a mixed number. It means one and one third. So I have one full piece and one third of a piece. Add this to here. What does that give you? You had three pieces plus one piece. That's going to give you one, four. And then you'll have one third. So you never leave the improper fraction as is. You have to change it into a mixed number and then add whatever other whole numbers you have. Now let's do a couple of uh, subtraction problems. And I'm going to try it like this. Let's say I have 3 and 2 thirds. So I have 1, 2, 3, and 2 thirds. Okay? And I'm going to take away 1 and 1 third. And then I'll show you how that's done. One and one third means I'm taking one piece away and then one third of a piece away. What are you going to end up having? You're going to have one full piece and then you're going to have one, two, three, four third pieces. One, two, three, four third pieces. So according to this, my answer is two and one third. And let's see how this works. Okay. Let me write this down. Three and two thirds and I'm taking away one and one third. Two minus one is one. 3 minus 1 is 2, and this is consistent with what I have done. Okay, let's do another example. Let's say I have 3 and 2 thirds, 1, 2, 3, and 2 thirds, and I'm taking away a whole number. What am I going to get? Let's look at it. When I take away one whole number, that means I'm going to take this away. What am I going to have? One full piece, second full piece, and then in the third piece I'm going to have two of those. So I have two and two thirds. And let me show you how that works. All right. So let's do this vertically. 3 and 2 thirds minus 1. And since there is no whole number place, I just bring it down 2 thirds, 3 minus 1, 2. 2 and 2 thirds, which is consistent with what I found out. Now let's do a problem where I will end up borrowing. Okay, let's say I am subtracting, I had 3, and now I want to subtract 1 and 1 third from it. Alright, well let's look at that. What does that mean? I took the 1 full piece away, and then 1 third of a piece away, and what am I going to end up having? I'm going to end up one full piece, which is here, and then two thirds of a piece, one and two thirds. And let's see how that works out. Let's say I had three, oops, 
I had three and I wanted to take one and one third away. Now since there is no fraction part, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some borrowing. I'm going to borrow one full piece, so I'm going to have two pieces left. One full piece means, and I'm going to match this, since it's in thirds, I'm going to write three thirds. So three is the same as two and three thirds. Then I can subtract three minus one, that's two, and then two minus one, that's one. One and two thirds. Let's do another example where I will do borrowing. And uh, in this case, I'm not going to draw the picture and I'm going to use some big numbers. Let's say I'm borrowing. Uh, I have this situation, three and two sevenths, and I want to take away one and one, uh, four sevenths. All right. Now, since this number is small, this number is big, I need to borrow. I'm going to borrow one full piece from here. I'm going to have two left. And I have to match the denominator. How am I going to do that? That means I'm going to have a seven sevens. And then I had a two. That's going to change into nine sevens. Okay, so I borrowed from three as seven over seven and added to that. And this number always ends up this plus that. Alright, so what do I have right now? Instead of 3 and 2 sevenths, I have 2 and 9 sevenths that I'm going to take away. 1 and 4 sevenths. 9 minus 4, 5. 2 minus 1, 1. Let's do another example so that you can see that. Let's say I have 3 and 1 tenths and I want to take away 2 and um, 2 and 9 tenths. I need to borrow because this number is smaller than this. I borrow from here. I have 2. And this number is going to change to what? This plus that, which is 11. So this problem became 2 and 11 tenths. And I have 2 and 9 tenths. Let's subtract 11 minus 9, that is 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. So I don't have to write anything, 2 tenths. Guess what? I need to go one more step. I can simplify. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 10 divided by 2 is 5. The answer is 1 fifth.